Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Bill Cotney, one of the surgeons here at Fort Healthcare. As a surgeon, we were trained to take care of varicose veins ever, ever since I started. So 18 years treating varicose veins, the first 13 years being uh, a little more um, difficult for the patient than it is now over the past five years. Uh, a lot easier with different techniques that I'm going to go over with you tonight. Make it a lot easier for you to have uh, treatments and I think a lot better results as well. Varicose veins, that's what we're here for. It's not an uncommon problem, it's a very common problem. First thing we need to talk about though when we talk about varicose veins is the anatomy. And the anatomy helps you understand why you have the problem, okay? So in our legs we have veins that bring blood from our cells all the way from the feet all the way up to the heart. The, all the cells in your body need blood, so the heart oxygenates it, sends it down with a pump, and then it has to come back somehow. Since we don't have a pump to bring it back, our muscles with movement, any kind of small movements, walking, whatever, squeeze the veins, the veins push the blood up. Through these multiple uh, vessels that branch and connect to each other and that pushes the blood back up to the heart. There's two different branches, there's two different types, there's two different types of veins. There's the external or superficial saphenous vein. That's the, this one here is the greater saphenous vein. That's the one that we are concentrating on when we talk about varicose vein problems. The blue or gray are the deeper veins, okay? The gray one's the, the femoral vein, that's the main vein that take, takes blood back. The, um, Blue ones are branching veins that connect the two, okay? Within our vein system, we have valves. There's a deep vein, the femoral vein that I showed you, with a valve. This, the greater saphenous vein with valves, and then there's connecting veins with valves. So you got veins all over the place in your legs and they're connecting and they're bringing the blood back, okay? I want to concentrate and just go back right at this junction here, okay? That's what we call the saphenofemoral junction. It's just the saphenous to the femoral and the, the connection is the junction. Right there is a valve as well, the main valve, and that's the one usually that causes the problem where we have flow backwards in the vein system, and we'll talk about that. And this is exactly what I'm trying to explain to you. This is a normal valve and a normal vein. Okay, there's a little bit of a bulge wherever there's a valve, just because you have to get the valve in there. And the blood's going this way, upstream, and it can't come back because the valve closes. Okay? If you have valvular damage, you can have damage to your valves for multiple reasons, and that's going to come up quick. Uh, but you can see why you get a problem with the vein backflow. The valve's damaged. There's no pump to pump the blood up, so it just falls backwards and sits in your legs and this is where it usually sits in the external superficial system where you get those you know the veins are swollen it's almost like grapes hanging off your legs you'll see some people that's the reason because there's back pressure and vein th vein walls are very thin arterial walls are thick so they wouldn't do that unfortunately for the women you're a little bit targeted with this disease 72 percent of you will probably have varicose veins at some point 42 percent of the men I think the biggest reason the difference between men and women numbers is pregnancies. Multiple pregnancies increase the risk of varicose veins because of increasing the back pressure. The baby's laying on the veins that bring the blood up, the main veins here, pushing constantly on, making increased back pressure. But other reasons, and probably the most common reason, is genetics. If mom and dad had them, mom or dad had them, then it's likely you're going to get them at some point. What kind of problems can you have? You can have anywhere from I have varicose veins uh, and they don't bother me to I have varicose veins and I have big ulcers in my legs, okay? You can get real dark colored skin as you can see right here and ulcers within the middle of that skin. What's the reason for that? The back pressure of the blood into the outer veins that supply blood to our, or that bring blood back from our skin and the tissue beneath it, 
those uh, valves aren't working, so the blood is sitting there, blowing out that vein. When it's doing that, it's also pushing the skin away from the arterial system. The arterial blood can't get to the skin anymore when there's so much swelling from the veins being dilated so long. And therefore, there's nothing, no, no oxygen getting to the skin, and then the skin breakdown occurs, discoloration occurs, and then you can get ulcers. A lot of times we treat ulcers from veins by putting a tight wrap on. And the only, the only reason that works is because you're squeezing the fluid back out of that area, allowing the arterial system to get blood to the skin and allowing it to heal. It can go from right here, just having varicose veins, progressing to more significant disease. Initially, when you come in, you'll describe your problem. You can have multiple symptoms. You can have, my legs ache, my legs feel real heavy, they itch, they're a little tingly, and a common complaint is restlessness. If you, you know, you have those kicking legs, you know, when you're traveling or when you're trying to, trying to go to bed and your legs just aren't bothering you, that's a symptom of varicose veins. There's other reasons to have that too, but a varicose veins is a big symptom. So we have to treat that, okay? We initially need to treat it conservatively. Number one, because we have to um, start, you know, less aggressive initially. Uh, because you sometimes can treat people with simple measures such as compression stockings, leg elevation, maybe some anti-inflammatories, and they'll do fine. You know, you'll do fine for maybe a few years. But it doesn't treat the bottom problem. The other reason we need to treat conservatively at first is because insurance companies aren't going to let us pro, uh, go ahead with surgeries and procedures that I'm going to show you unless you've tried these particular uh, treatments for about three months. And that's pretty much across the board now um, in all insurances. So the treatments are compression stockings. You'd, you would come in, I'd get your prescription for a compression stocking, or if you know you have varicose veins now and you know you want to come in and get treated, then just get a prescription from your doctor, start wearing them. When you come in, we can document when you started wearing them and get your process going quicker. Varicose vein problems are lifelong. They don't go away unless you treat them with procedures we're talking about. So the only way we can actually fix the problem is by coming into the office and going ahead with these procedures. Probably, every, probably all of us have spider veins to some point, the little, the little teeny things that, that spider out from an area that you all just hate, and especially the women. And those are the most difficult to treat, unfortunately because um, even when we do the major procedures we're talking about, they just don't seem to want to go away, okay? The big veins that people have with, you know, that are, that are obviously easy to see and that are bulging, those are the ones that we can cure completely. But we still do treatment on these spider veins in, in multiple different ways with good results. An injection is one way, we do a lot of these. Um, we have a little light that goes on the leg and we can find the vein that we want to inject. It's a little bit bigger than the one you actually see, and then we inject it and it fans out and usually takes care of the problem to some degree. Sometimes completely, sometimes partially. It usually will help to some degree. These other uh, modalities where you can see pulsed light and laser treatments, you've heard of those before. They work good. They work very well, the laser and the, and the pulse light, except they're very expensive. Insurance companies aren't going to pay for cosmetic type things. So that's where you get stuck trying to provide care, yet, you know, it's not going to get paid for from the insurance company in, in the respect of uh, the laser treatment. The, the sclerotherapy, a lot of times we can get taken care of um, because the, they're usually also associated with varicose veins that are causing symptoms, so then we can treat that way. All right, here's another treatment. It's called phobectomy. This one, I think, works the best. And as far as the secondary treatment, the primary treatment, we haven't gotten to yet. But this is a secondary treatment for bigger varicose veins that we can completely remove, no stitches, and uh, heals up very nice with maybe a little freckle of a scar that some people, sometimes you can't see anything. 
And uh, all it is is when you have the varicose vein that we can see, we put a little mark on it because when you lay down, usually it goes away. And then we numb up a little spot, make a little incision, a teeny one, and then we are able to put a little hook in there and pull the vein out. We can pull a long vein out through that teeny little hole. And uh, when you pull the vein out, the branches just kind of snap back and close down on their own. So you have a little bruising, but it goes away. Okay. And then we put these little tapes on as opposed to stitches. And when you take them off, there's just little marks there. And over time, you can't hardly see them. It works really well. People are very happy when they get those. This is called venous closure. This is the newest thing we've been doing probably for the past five years. And we've had great results. Um, done a few hundred of them at least. And uh, we haven't had any major complications of any kind. Um, I have not had any infections. The only major complications are blood clots that can develop in your leg and go to your lung, but that's never happened. Uh, it's extremely difficult for that to happen. It's not impossible, but it's an extremely low risk for that. The catheter for the closure, and what I mean by closure is, you remember that first slide with the veins. And you have the, the superficial vein, the saphenous vein, it runs along the inside of your leg and then it dumps into the deep vein. Right up here in the inguinal area is a, is a uh, valve. And if that valve is damaged, all the blood flows back in your leg. So what we want to do is close this vein, okay? And when we close it, we also close those little branches I was showing you. Okay, now the blood can't settle down in your leg, okay? It has to go through somewhere else. And therefore, when we do the procedure, I've had people who have had, I'll show you pictures at the end, terrible looking legs. And you do this procedure and afterwards you can hardly tell that they've had any problems. That's not true of everyone. Sometimes we have to do the phlebectomy to finish the treatment. And then after that, everything you know, looks real good and they feel so much better. That's the big key. If you have significant discomfort, all the, all the symptoms we mentioned before, after the procedure, those symptoms go away. Whether or not you have any veins left or not to remove later is beside the point at that point. This is the catheter we use right here. It's a device that connects to a radio frequency current. We have a little machine in the office by the way, we do this all in the office. Um, so you can come into the office, you can get the procedure done, you can drive yourself in, you can drive yourself home. And then you um, can also return to work the next day without any problem. You end up having a, a compression wrap on your leg pretty much from foot to, uh, to thigh. And that just kind of keeps the pressure on the leg so it, so it allows that vein to seal you know, over the next day or so. There are other doctors and recommendations that are out there about, you know, keeping compression stockings for a week or two. Um, I have found that that really doesn't make any difference in the long term. So I usually get people off stockings pretty quick and get them back to normal activity as soon as we can. This is the knee. And then this is to the inside of the knee. That's where the vein comes through. We just numb up this spot. We make a little nick in the skin. We pass this little device through there. It's called a sheath, and that's just to stabilize everything. And then the catheter goes through the sheath, and the tip of this will, will um, not go into that junction I was telling you about, but it'll be pulled back about two centimeters, and that's where we know we're in the right place. And we can do that. We can see that because we, we do it under ultrasound. So the ultrasound's in the office, and we can see exactly where we need to be. Then, after that is in place, probably about this long, then this is in the vein. And then we just numb up around the vein, and we're ready to go. After that's done, we pull this back. This part here has a, I don't know, gold metal fibers on it. And that's where the radio frequency, uh, radio frequency heat comes from. Okay, so this is sitting in the vein, and then it heats up the vein. 
And then the vein myofibrils, they're called, they're little teeny coils of uh, tissue will shrink down and cause the vein to shrink down right on the catheter. And because it's hot, it'll attach itself one side of the vein to the other. And therefore, it's not going to be open anymore. Okay, so the blood can't pour backwards and fill your legs with these big veins and all the blood that you feel. You, if you consider having varicose veins with these big vessels in your lower leg, it's going to feel real heavy because you actually are probably carrying around a, you know, quart of milk on your leg that shouldn't be there. And that's why it feels so heavy. So here's the catheter going through the vein, okay, and there's those little branches. And those all get closed as you're pulling back the catheter, okay. Here's the length of catheter. This is heating the vein. It, this was over here. It heated the vein right there. And that's the two centimeters from the junction, all right? S greater saphenous vein into the deep vein. We don't want to get into the deep vein because that's when you can get blood clots, okay? So we don't go there. And then we close the vein. We apply heat to this area for 15 seconds. We move it back to here, apply heat, move it back, and then we pull it out. The process takes about two minutes, and then it's done. And then you end up with a stitch and a Band-Aid, and then that leg wrap we talked about, okay? So, like I said, most people are back to normal activity in one or two days. I say, you know, the next day, or you can leave our office and drive home and just go about your normal business. You're going to have this kind of a bulky dressing on for two days. That's going to hinder you somewhat, but it really doesn't stop you from doing what you'd like to do. That procedure is covered by insurance as long as we go through the conservative process first. However, if you have problems, if you have varicose veins that have bled, sometimes people will have one that will actually break through the skin surface and bleed very quickly. And you know, that's easily treated by just putting your finger on it and holding pressure and get to the emergency room, but it's not a difficult treatment. And the only thing that's difficult about it is that people get really scared when they have a lot of blood going on. But just putting your finger on it will stop that because there's no pressure. The vein system doesn't have any pressure to it, so it'll stop bleeding. But if you have had that problem, then insurance companies will let you do this right away. Same thing for ulcer disease, if you have the ulcers on your legs. If you have um, the dermatitis, the, the darkened skin coloration, then they will just allow us to go right ahead and take care of the problem. Really good cosmetic outcomes. I mean, in the past when we would do vein stripping, we'd have multiple uh, areas of incisions and we'd pull the vein out and it was a little bit barbaric and a lot of bruising, a lot of discomfort. You'd be off for a month to six weeks. This way, you don't have any of that because you're not removing the vein, you're just closing it. You know, and it's not, it's really not causing any disruption in your activity that way. We do it all under local. We don't use general anesthetic for this procedure at all. You just don't need it. And yes, you might have a little bit of a, ooh, that, that, that local pinch hurt, or, oh, that one was a little sore, but you know, that's pretty much it. You know, and we don't have anybody screaming off the table because it's hurt so much. If so, we just have four people come in and hold them down. <laughs> no problem. If you have blood clots, you know, there are people who have had what we call DVTs, blood clots in your deep system in the past or actually in the present. You, you, we can't do the procedure. If you've had uh, problems with your veins because you've had clots in the past and the, the clots are gone now, but the deep vein has reflux in it, we can't treat it because that would cause more problems because now there's nothing taking blood back everything is falling backwards everywhere. So you don't want to close any vein off that's trying to get the blood back because then you'll have a lot of swelling. Not common. Maybe one out of, I would, I would say maybe one out of 50 people will have that problem. But it's not common at all. Almost, almost everybody can be treated. Here's the risks. I'll kind of go through the list. Uh, perforation hole through the wall of the vein. If you put a hole in the vein, it doesn't cause any problems anyway other than a little bleeding and bruising but I've never seen that happen. Deep vein thrombosis, uh, again, not, have not had that happen. It's a possible complication, and if you do have it, you gotta be treated with blood thinners for three months or so, okay? That's the treatment. 
Pulmonary embolism, even less common, would occur only if you had a clot in the deep vein and it would break off and go to your lung. Again, five years doing this, not, never seen it. Phlebitis is more common, okay? It's, it, it doesn't happen, you know, it'll happen maybe one out of 10, one out of 20 people will end up with one of their varicosity, one of their varicosities got clotted during the procedure and it got inflamed. That's on the skin surface. So it'll be tender, it'll be red, it'll hurt, and it, the treatment is an aspirin a day and a heating pad and then it's taken care of in a week or so. <coughs> that's if that happens. And that's not a terrible complication, but it's, it is one of them that can be uncomfortable. Hematoma, everybody gets bruising under the skin. Minimal with this procedure, more common with phlebectomy. Okay, but it all goes away. It's just, you know, the, the body will remove all of that. Uh, infections, I think I saw it one time, treated easily with antibiotics, no problem. Uh, skin burn, never seen it. It could happen if, the, if this part of the catheter happened to be too close to the skin when I'm pulling it out. I'm very mindful of that, so I don't do that. Um, but it could happen. And then if you treat, you know, you treat it like a burn and it's going to get better by pretty much on its own. That's really it as far as the complications. All right. These are some people that we did or kind enough to give us some pictures, okay? This is somebody we did here. Um, you can see these big bulges. I mean, you can all see that from where you are, right? They're just hanging off everywhere. I mean, those are huge, okay? So then we did this procedure, and then that's what it looks like now. You can see that there's a couple little spots here, but for the most part, it looks like a fairly normal leg. Again, these big ones right here, okay? And then afterwards, so hard to show you, but I mean, those are, I mean, that looks really good after having what you saw the first time. And like I said, some people will still have some varicose veins after that initial procedure with this, but we get rid of them by doing those phlebectomies I showed you before. And those are done in the office too, you know. We sit there and talk to you, make a little numbing, make a little nick, pull them out, we're talking, having a good time. By the time you know it, <laughs> you're all done, no big deal. They pinch a little bit, I'm not gonna lie to you, but not terrible. These are some of the problems you can see you know, when it gets worse, when, you, when, it, you know, when it's years and years and years and you, know, you just don't do anything, which is very common. You, know? you get these skin changes, you know, these discolored, darkened changes here, um, some bruising, and you can see the, well, you can't see the varicosity very well, but it's, it's there. Um, after the treatment then, you know, this is probably a, few months to a year later. I can't remember exactly. Um, but you can see already the change in the color. And uh, you don't see any varicose veins. Happy camper. You know, people who really have significant symptoms from this really get better. And the, those are the happiest ones. Covered a lot of material. It may still seem a little, you know, cloudy. But um, the, the bottom line is, is that we can treat any kind of vein, any kind of vein problem. Um, uh, sometimes the results is going to be very good. Sometimes the results are going to be much better than you have. And sometimes it's only going to be somewhat better depending upon what the problem is. But we can always improve for sure. And a lot of times in a, in a big way. So it's, it's a it's a lot better than it used to be. So, you know, if there's any fear about getting, you know, your varicose veins taken care of, it really doesn't matter about your health. If you have significant health, problem, health problems, it, it isn't increase your risk to do this. You're not getting general anesthesia, so you're not gonna have any increased problem because you've had it done because you've had some other problem. Okay? Any questions? with ultrasound. We have ultrasound in, in the office and an ultrasound tech that comes and we verify it before we start. 
we can tell just because we know what the anatomy looks like with the ultrasound. And it's very clear. We can see actually this little vessel right here. It's called a, super, a superficial epigastric. And this one right here, we always see it. And we put the catheter just to this side of it. Plus, we measure from the deep vein that we can see back on this one. It's very easy to see, very clear. And we don't do it if we don't know for sure we're in the right spot. We don't just say, ah, that's probably good. Let's go ahead. That's not good technique. Let's say, yeah, you just wanted to come in and talk about it, okay? We would just give you the information. We could get you the cost, you know, depending upon what you wanted. If you had spider veins and you wanted to get sclerotherapy, we could do that, and um, we would tell you, give you a quote as to how much it would be. And, you know, if, as always, at least at, to my knowledge, uh, because I don't, you know, deal with the billing, but I know that we always make sure that if, if somebody wants to, you know, pay installments or do whatever they need to do to try to pay for something that they want. We try to do that because, you know, you don't want to make a big burden financially to, to fix something that, you know, that you want. But we try to, to help with that as much as we can. Yes, it does. They're the ones who kind of set the standard for what has to be done in order to allow this to be done. If you really want us to, we will. Typically, we'll do one side, then the other, just to give you a little break. But if you're like, ah, go ahead, we would do them both. If you have reflux with no obvious varicosities and you have swelling, it still could help that. Um, the only difference is, is that if you don't have varicose veins, it's possible that some of your swelling could be from uh, lymphedema. Well, in that case, I really think it's important to talk to us about it before you decide you can't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we have people set up to talk to about how you can deal with that. No, because all you have had to do is have had treatment for three months of support stockings at some point and you've already had stripping, so no, probably not. It's usually based on our scheduling, okay? You could do it one day and do it, you know, the next day and do it the next day if you wanted, but typically it's like, well, we'll do this one thing and then we schedule, maybe it'll be a couple weeks later or something like that. What I would say to you is that if you do not have an active clot, okay, and we do an ultrasound and it shows that your femoral vein does not currently have a clot in it, and it is not refluxing, and your saphenous vein is refluxing, we could then do it, and it would help, help you. The chances are that if you've had deep vein thrombosis, especially if you've had it more than once, the chances are the, the valves are probably damaged and you probably wouldn't be able to have it done. But it's not 100%. Typically, someone with diabetes who has vascular problems, it's almost always arterial. It isn't related to the veins typically at all. It's typically arterial disease because the diabetes um, causes problems in the very small vessels. You know, that's why you usually have problems with toes, you know, the feet more, more at the edge towards the toes, because those really small vessels get affected by diabetes, and those are the arteries, the, the blood, the pump, uh, the heart pumps the blood through the arteries, the vein takes the blood back. The veins typically aren't affected. However, if you have, uh, let's say, an ulcer and you're diabetic, you probably should get your saphenous vein treated as soon as you can because that um, will increase your risk of recurrence and more problems from an ulcer. So if you do have an ulcer and you have diabetes, I definitely would do the venous closure if you have reflux because it will help keep that ulcer from coming back and heal it up quicker. Anything else? We good? Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Thank you.